Hey, Corey. <laughs> Welcome to the office. Uh, have you ever been to a chiropractor before? No. No. You know, I don't let you know what we're doing here is very unique and different compared to most other offices. You know, I understand here because of low back pain. You know, I'm going to ask you some questions about your low back pain in just a second. But first, let me explain what we're going to do here today. First, what we're going to do is let's talk about this spine. And the spine has two important functions. The first is it supports and keeps us upright. That's called our posture, right? And the second most important function of your spine is it protects your spinal cord. And a healthy spinal cord is essential to your overall health. And let me show you why. Because your brain, it controls everything in the body. It does that by sending energy down the spinal cord. So it sends energy down the spinal cord like a river carrying life energy from the brain through the spine, out these nerves to all the vital organs in the body. So each and every one of your organs is totally dependent on receiving this energy from the brain to keep you alive and healthy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now what happens, Corey, is because of different stresses in our lives, some sudden, some over time, individual bones or whole sections and curves of the spine, they'll shift out of place. When those shifts occur in the spine, what those are called, they're called subluxations. Have you ever heard that before? No? Okay, well say that word with me, subluxation. So what subluxations do is they block the energy from the brain from getting to the organs at that level. So you can think of it a lot like a dimmer switch on the wall where you turn the energy down, the energy can't get through the nerves to the organs, so the organs at the end of those nerves are going to progressively weaken and degenerate over time and cause disease. Make sense? Mm -hmm. What will happen too, Corey, is because subluxations will weaken the rest of the spine and they'll distort your posture. When that happens, because the spinal cord runs through that spine, it has to stretch like a rubber, rubber band to fit in that distorted structure. When the spinal cord is under stress like that, it cannot move energy through the nerves to the organs. So then all the organs start to progressively weaken and degenerate over time and eventually lead to disease. So your posture and your spine is directly related to your overall health. Can you see how that works? Yes. Now here's the thing, Corey, is that this is very important, is that many posture distortions and subluxations, they don't cause any pain. So by the time you're in pain, these nerves are inflamed, the energy's not getting through the nerves to the organs, so the organs at the end of the nerves are also being affected. So you're here because of low back pain, right? Mm -hmm. That means the nerves in your low back are inflamed, the energy's not getting through the nerves to the organs, so the organs at the end of your nerves are also being affected. Wow. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you some questions, not only regarding about, you're not only about your low back, but also regarding your overall health. What we'll do then is we will take some x-rays and then we'll have you come back to the doctor's report. Okay, and I'll explain to you what that means in just a minute. Okay, so I, so I see that you have this low back pain. Now here, now show me where that's at. And so that's what I'll do. And then I'll come up here and I'll go, so these nerves, so those nerves in the low back, they supply the strength and energy to the low back, to so the low back muscles, but they also go down, the supply strength and energy down to the legs and to the feet and to your pelvic organs. So any postural distortion, subluxations there will weaken those nerves can cause low back pain like you're feeling, but it also can cause pain into the legs and feet, weakness in the legs and feet, coldness in the legs and feet, numbness in the legs and feet. Have you experienced any of that now or in the past? Yes. Okay. So uh, then I just go to which ones and, you know, how do you feel about having those symptoms and then go on to the next one. So those nerves also supply strength and energy into your pelvic organs. So what that means is when you, when you have posture distortions there that weaken the nerves, it will cause, you know, you to have constipation, diarrhea problems if it's your colon. Have you ever had that now or in the past? It can either cause you to have bladder problems, which would be inability to start urination, um, difficulty holding urine when you cough, laugh, or sneeze, you know, recurring bladder infections, uh, and also uh, urinary tract infections, any of those now or in the past. Then these nerves also supply the strength and energy into your um, reproductive organs. So what that would mean when you have postural distortions there and weakness is that you have you know painful menstruations, irregular cycles, inability to get pregnant, you know difficulties getting pregnant, um, any of those now in the past. Mm -hmm. Now, Corey, because subluxations, you know, because subluxations will affect the rest of your spine. I'm going to ask you questions regarding the other areas of your spine as well. Okay, so. You know, in this middle part of the spine, these nerves supply strength and energy through to your middle back and through across the, the front and to your ribs and, and also to the upper digestive organs. So any subluxations, postural distortions there will weaken the nerves and cause pain around the ribs and to the chest, any of that now or in the past. Those nerves also supply strength and energy to the liver, gallbladder, spleen, uh, pancreas, stomach. So, so postural distortions will weaken the nerves and cause, you know, acid reflux, um, heartburn, uh, ulcers, any of those now or in the past. So I'm just gonna keep, you know, that's, I basically just keep going through those. I'm speaking to Jock right now. Basically go through those and go all the way up through the spine, pull out as many organ problems as possible, 
And then, okay, so what we need to do now is we need to talk about the doctor's report. So what the doctor's report is, is it's a, it's a process of you becoming a patient here, becoming accepted as a patient here in the office. What it is, is it's a two hour process. The first hour is dedicated to a group education orientation where Dr. Zano is going to teach you how to become the doctor. He's going to go over the cause of your condition, how it's affecting your health and life right now. All in this requires for becoming a patient here in the office, how to read x-rays. So for those reasons, your spouse or significant other has to be here to the doctor's report. So the, the report that we had scheduled you for is tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Um, are you going to be able to make that with you and your husband? Yes. Yes, okay. And if not, then we handle the reasons why. Okay, well, I'm not sure. Well, I need you to call him right now uh, before we even take your x-rays to make sure that we get that scheduled. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm handling that even before we take the x-rays so that we don't take an x-ray and then they don't show up for two weeks. And then that x-ray isn't as valuable as it was the day before. So, okay, we get that all scheduled. We'll, 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 I'll come back in once we take your x-rays. I'll have a form that just says that you understand what we're going to do next. So what they're going to do next is Corey's going to them take your x-rays. Um, once she's done, I'm going to evaluate them briefly. And I'll come back into this room once you're back in here, and I'll let you know a little bit about what I found, and then we'll go from there. So I'll come back in after the x-rays. And so I want to summarize what we found. So. So Corey, we came in here with low back pain, but when we looked through your case history, we found that you have, you have not only have low back pain, but you got numbness and tingling down into the right leg. You also have had irregular cycles and painful menstruations for many years, which is very frustrating, as you said. Um, you also have um, you know, urinary tract infections. We went up to your middle part of the spine, and you also have acid reflux, and, um, and you do have a family history of diabetes that you definitely are concerned about that you don't want to end up like your grandma. Uh, when we get up to the upper back, you said that you have pain in between the shoulder blades, but you also have asthma. Those nerves supply strength energy to the lungs there as well. As we got up into the neck, you said you had, you had um, energy problems. So, you know, what we found is that the nerves in your, in your lower neck are affecting your thyroid. And then up here at the top part of the neck, you said that you get colds quite often and you've had sinus infections and ear infections when you were younger. So, what we found is that you have 17 different health problems. You have basically six major subluxations causing seven different postural distortions leading to those 17, as I said, 17 different health conditions. I mean, how do you feel about that? Not too good. Yeah, not too good, exactly. Or, you know, I'll even go further, actually, the actual feeling, you know, like frustrated, uh, hopeless, those type of things. So, so if you don't get these things corrected, what's going to happen? Is it going to get better or worse? Worse. And when you think about getting worse, what does that look like? What does that mean? And what I want them to say is more disease, sickness, you know, and then we got these, these their goals sitting right here too. You know, these are your goals that you've written down. These are really good goals. How committed to these goals are you? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking for very committed. So how strong and healthy do you have to be to reach these goals? And, really healthy. Yeah, really, really healthy. So what's the most important thing in your life? My health. My health, right, exactly. Can you reach these goals and allow your, your body and condition to progress the way that you are? No. No. Okay. So that's why we're going to come back to the doctor's report so you'll understand everything that you need to know as far as taking care of this problem. So um, I'll just have you go. So I'll go through the form. You know, number one talks about it's going to be a group education orientation. Um, so that's what the first part is. It's going to be about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. You learn how to become the doctor. The second point, number, number two, is that. Um, you're going to receive a care plan, I believe. You're going to receive a care plan which includes the amount of time and number of adjustments necessary for your correction and the cost. Number three is all financial insurance costs will be discussed. We do ask you to bring a form of payment to, keep, to get started in the office. Number four is just stating that your spouse or significant other has to be here with you to understand what your health is, what we're really going to do so they can support you, and so they totally have a clear picture of what needs to be done. Um, number five is that it's going to be approximately two hours. And number six is that any small children will be left at home at this one time. Okay, so just by initialing here, you're gonna, that's just an agreement that you understand what we're talking about. And then uh, wait to sign that until we get to the front desk. When it gets to the front desk, um, we pass them off to the, the front desk person and I grab the three pamphlets, the day one pamphlet, the, chiro the formal way for chiropractic care, and two types of chiropractors. I explain to them the, um, the first one, 
with uh, initial visit, you know, subluxations, posture distortions, health problems, show them that this is what their x-rays are starting to look like, um, or what they look like when we look at the x-rays, and then to read over this information before they come back tomorrow night so they have a foundation of knowledge before they get started. I sit there at the front desk to make sure that they get scheduled. There's no, um, you know, backing, backing up on what they said with me, you know, whether, you know, scheduling on a different day or anything like that. So just make sure that they don't do anything like that. So, and then that's basically it.